Hello everyone, welcome back to Steam Code. This is part 3 of our Mastermind in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript tutorial series. And in this tutorial, I'll be adding some functionality for the user clicks on the board and also the uh, color selections. And so let's get started. But before we start with our JS, there's one thing that I need to address and that's in our main.css file. In the previous video, I did not show you the code for the div with the uh, code class, which is this black box. So I'll go over that right now. So first we use display grid and then grid template columns repeat four by 50 pixels. So there are four columns. Each one of them is 50 pixels in length. And then grid template rows repeat one by 50 pixels. So there's only one row and that will be 50 pixels in height. And then the total width is 200 pixels. The total height is 50 pixels. The border will be five pixels solid black. Margin zero auto to center it within its parent div. And then margin top 10 pixels to make it 10 pixels from the top of the page. All right, so now let's move into our app.js file. So in this file, first we're going to declare some variables that we'll need later on in the project. So let's create var current color and we'll set that to white. This will just be the current color that the player has chosen. And then var current board cells and that will equal board 40 board 41 board 42 and board 43 and what this array is is it's basically stating what board cells are currently in the game so once the user starts the game they're not going to start playing say in the middle of the board they're going to start at the bottom and those four are those four those four cells at the bottom of the board are these four that i put inside the array so now next var current peg cells and we'll set that to just as before peg 40 peg 41, peg 42, and peg 43. Same rationale as the previous one. These peg cells are the pegs that are currently active within the game. And then var current row will be set to 11. That's the current row that we're playing at. And so our current row once we start the game will be the bottom, which is row 11. And then we need a an array of possible colors. So we'll call var possible colors and we'll set that equal to an array, blue, green, red, yellow, orange and pink all right and now we need to define four variables these will these are variables that I'll explain in a later video but we'll define them now so that we don't have to do so in the future so var cell one cell one color and then cell two color cell 3 color and cell 4 color we're just declaring them now we're not actually defining them but that will be done later now we need to create a dictionary of the colors and so we'll set the RGB values of each of these colors blue green red etc to the to the names within the possible colors array so var colors is equal to curly brackets 
and then we'll say RGB 0 128 and make sure you have the proper spacing because if you don't then later on once we start working with these colors it may produce errors and we'll set that one to green and then we can copy this a few times to make this process less tedious And so the next one will be yellow. And this will be 20, 255, 255 and 0. Next is red. This will just be 255, 0, 0. Next we'll have blue. This will be 0, 0, 255. Green, or pink, I mean, sorry. And that will be 255, 192, 203. So 255, 192, and 203. And lastly, we have orange. And that will be 255, 165, 0. All right. So now let's move on to our actual code. So we're going to create a variable called code, var code. And this will be an array. And so this will be the first thing inside of this array will be possible colors and then math.floor, math.random, times six. And so what this does is it chooses a random decimal between zero and five, and then I floor it, which means I basically truncate the the decimal and so it becomes an integer and then I use that integer to find a color within possible colors and so we can copy this three other times to get the four color code and that's all we need for this variable and so now that we're done creating the variable so let's, let's now create ways for the player to start selecting colors so all the way down at the bottom we're going to create a handler so we'll say dot color dot click and then function and then we'll create a variable called color so let color equal this dot attribute ID because we set the IDs of each color to their actual color values and then we're going to set current color to this variable we just created and then we're going to say dot current color dot CSS background color color and so we're changing the background color of this current color box that you see here to the color that the user selects whenever they click and so if we save this and reload the page we can see how this works so when I click on red as you can see this box down here changes to red same for the rest of the colors so now it's handle for the player actually clicking on the board so they can start placing these colors on top of the board. So now we'll say dot board cell dot click and then function same as last time. We're going to create a variable called ID so var ID is equal to 
this dot attribute ID. And then we're going to run this through an is valid function that we're going to create next time in the next video. So if is valid ID. So if this position is valid, then this dot CSS background color and then current color. And so since the is valid function does not yet exist, when you try to click on the board right now, you'll receive an error from the console. And so to mitigate that before the next video is posted, you can just comment out this if statement so that wherever the user places or wherever the user clicks on the board, their color is placed. So if you save this and then reload, if I click orange, click anywhere on the board, orange is placed. Pink, same thing, yellow, red, blue, and green. All right, so in the next video, in further videos, we'll add this is valid function and other functions that makes the players able to only place on the current row that he is playing on. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. All of this code is available to you on our GitHub so you can see the full commented code. And also make sure to check out our Patreon. I have that linked in the description. At our Patreon, I'll be having polls for patrons and non-patrons to vote on what you'd like to see next and also premium videos for patrons who would like to see some of the behind the scenes or some extra content. And so that's all I have for you today. Please like the video if you enjoyed. This has been Steam Code. I'll see you next time.